the motocross world descends on Sverapek, Slovakia, for the biggest and most prestigious race of the year, the Motocross Des Nations. For 1995, it's time for Great Britain to defend the precious one, two and three plates after beating America in Switzerland last year and ending their incredible 13-year winning streak. Will Britain be able to defend their crown? Will America be able to win back the title they made their own in the late 80s and early 90s? Each year the challenge is tougher, with a great wealth of talent emerging across Europe. Italy have current World 125 vice champion Alessio Chiodi on the factory 125 Yamaha. On the 250 is Chiodi's teammate, Andrea Bartolini, who's won several Grand Prix and has shown amazing speed at times. On the 500 for Italy is World 125 champion Alessandro Fusar. Fusar could be the weak link, but the last time Italy picked a 125 world champion to ride a 500 was in 89, when KTM's Trampus Parker beat established 500 riders Jeff Ward, Jeff Leesk and newly crowned world champ Dave Thorpe. France seems to have a never-ending stream of young talent. Bale, Demarier, Bollet, Pichon and now 17-year-old 125 world championship sensation Sebastian Tortelli. On the 250 is De Mario, unbelievably fast but unbelievably inconsistent. He could lift the trophy for France, but pressure is De Mario's worst enemy. The 500 went to 125 Grand Prix rider Machio. Not capable of a win, but one top five placing is all it takes. On paper, Belgium must be the strongest team. Two world champions and one vice world champion, all of whom are relaxed and full of confidence. None more so than new 250 champ Stefan Everts on the 125. Marnik Bavotz rides the 250 and has an outstanding record in the Des Nations. A big occasion is not a problem. On the 500 is newly crowned champion Joel Smets. Smets, who raced an American national this year, was ridiculed because of the four-stroke. America, laugh at your peril. We caught up with the Belgian team, starting with Stefan Everts. World champion for one week, it's a good feeling? Very good feeling. We had a big party on Monday and now we have a big race again and uh, looking forward to have uh, yeah, the race today with the team. And the motocross has nations not been the luckiest event for you, but with last week's win maybe your luck will change now. Yeah, I think uh, same like in, in the GPs, I had bad luck for three years and uh, my luck changed uh, this year and maybe also in the the Nations it will change. And the team is very strong. Two champions, one vice champion. Cannot be a better team, I think. Yeah, I think we have the strongest team. Uh, I think we have to be uh, quiet in the first few laps and try to be in the front. And your form yesterday, nice to ride the 125. You certainly looked good. Yeah, it's pretty nice. It's little bike and uh, just having fun and uh, we had yesterday the qualification race. It was a good uh, practice for me. I was a little bit nervous in the beginning. I didn't know what to expect, but uh, it was going pretty good. And we mustn't forget that you are the 91 world 125 champion, so you enjoy riding the 125. Yeah, I'm the ex-champion, so maybe I want to prove something today. And the other riders, who do you think is a big threat to Belgium? Well, I think Lamson is going pretty well, and then we have Tortelli, Malin. I think the top riders, like usual, uh, just just to be strong all the race, not for 10 minutes, to be 30, 30 minutes very strong and to have the speed for 30, 30 minutes. And the setting, it couldn't be better. We have spoken to other riders, they said the track is in perfect condition, good lines for overtaking and the weather. Yeah, I think so. The track uh, was a little bit wet and that's why uh, a lot of different lines came. So it's good to pass. The track is very beautiful, it's very technical and uh, it's also a little bit tricky with the stones. So it's going to be slippery on some spots. So it's important to have the best lines. Well, I think uh, there's a big crowd and we look forward to this afternoon. And we wish the Belgium team good luck. Maybe you can finish second to England. I don't know. <laughs> Everybody's telling me that Belgium are favourites, is that correct? Well, if they say that, uh, I think so, because uh, you have a strong team now, you have two world champions, and I was second, so I think we have a really, really strong team. Uh, you say, but, and you were second, but your record in motocross as nations of recent years is second to none. Mm -hmm. You ride better because less pressure or more pressure? Maybe, I don't know. Um, I like it, I like the, the sphere and everything, and... Uh, I think it's, uh, it's more fun. We have three guys and uh, we can laugh a little bit about it and uh, that's maybe why I'm uh, not so stressed and uh, that's why maybe I'm riding comfortable. 
and the track and the, this morning's weather perfect? Yeah, I think so. The track is drying a little bit and uh, it's, uh, it's really good lines here and I think it's going to be a really good race. And you've seen many other riders, in, in your opinion, if Belgium don't win it, who can? I think um, England, America, maybe France, I don't know, it Italy is also quite strong. But Italy's luck is uh, already over, I think, yesterday with many problems. Yeah, I heard from Bartolini, he make a big crash, so uh, he's maybe not so riding really good, but uh, you never know. Well, Monique, um, with your form in the Motocrosses Nations, vice champion, Joel Smets and Seven Everts, I think you have a very strong team. Yeah, I think so. If you don't win it this year, we never will win it, I think. Thank you, Monique. First, congratulations, world champion. It was a great year for you? Yeah, I think so. I won uh, five from 12 GPs, so that's not so bad. And your riding form, looking at you in y yesterday, was very impressive. Yeah, I feel good already the whole year long. I've been working many, many years with this goal, and um, my condition is really good, and also my, my um, I uh, increase my riding style every year. So, and um, yeah, this year we could set up the bike very good, and I feel very confident with the bike, so that's why it's going so well. And the motocross this nations, great privilege for you. Yeah, of course, it's the first time for me. I'm in the Belgian team, so yeah, you will believe that I'm very motivated, as all the other riders of the team. And it's a great team, two world champions, vice world champion. The chances have never been better. No, and uh, yeah, that's true. I think um, it's not because we have two world champions and one vice world champion, but we have all very motivated riders. And that's what the team makes so strong, I think, or that's what, what I hope that it makes strong. <laughs> and yesterday's training, uh, everybody won their uh, race, heat mm. race. So you must be very confident. Yeah, of course, but you can't you really can't compare the practice from yesterday with, with the race from today because first of all the, the strongest teams first the top three of last year wasn't together with us so um, it's not really this afternoon it's gonna be much uh, yeah much heavier and a great setting superb weather bit, a little bit different from here last year oh a little bit <laughs> was really um, terrible last year so I hope it um, we will have sun this afternoon and there will be a lot of spectators and I think we're going to have a very, very great race. Well, good luck. Congratulations on the world title. You've worked hard to achieve that and we look forward to this afternoon's racing. Thank you very much. Thanks, Joe. America's 125 rider is reigning national champion Steve Lamson, who absolutely smoked the opposition in the States. After missing the opening rounds, he made up a large points deficit to take the championship in the closing stages. Yamaha's Jet Emick rides the 250. Emick's flair and natural speed make him great to watch and also the greatest threat to other teams. On the 500 is Ryan Hughes. Hughes has limited experience on the 500, but is aggressive and very determined and could cause a big upset. Ryan Hughes, welcome to Europe. Um, it's the first time that you've been this far east? Uh, yeah, <laughs> this is pretty far for me. And this track in perfect condition this morning, I believe, many are saying? Yeah, the track's really good. There's some slick spots, but you know, I think with the sun and everything that it'll dry it a little bit better and uh, the track should be good and a lot of good racing today. And you're riding the 500 and you're normally used to riding the 125 and I believe vice champion in the AMA 125 Nationals? Uh, yeah, I got second this year to uh, my teammate at the Donation, Steve Lampson. So. Yeah, and uh, this is uh, probably one of my first big races on a 500. Do you have time to practice in, on a 500 during the year? Um, I've practiced a couple times during the week, uh, the last three, probably three or four weeks up to this. You know, I got like once or twice a week, so I, I mean, I didn't get as much time as I'd like, but, you know, I got used to it, and uh, riding here, I've rode here on the track a lot too, so, you know, that helped me out. And team spirit is good today? Yeah, team spirit's really good. I think... Uh, practice went really good for us today so you know we're all looking forward to you know hopefully getting this number one plate back and getting the championship back to uh, the United States you know uh, you know everybody's uh, really excited about winning it and uh, I think we have the best you know three guys from the US and the most uh, determined guys from the US to come over here and do it so you know we're all looking forward to doing this today well with the weather conditions and the track conditions in such good form we hope to see some good racing from the Americans this afternoon and we wish you luck Thanks a lot. Thank you. Jeff, welcome back to Europe. Uh, you've been here many times before and uh, raced in the Motocrosses Nations team. 
a big thing for you to win this number one, two, and three plate back for USA? Yeah, you know, it's a big thing. You know, we got to get it back, definitely. And the track, far better than last year because you was not happy with last year's track, was you? Well, uh, last year's track, I mean, you know, it was, you know, it was really tough, you know. It was really rocky and it was really fast. Um, you know, I felt that I had a great uh, 125, you know, you know, before the event. And, you know, but I only came up with a pair of uh, seconds, I believe, and I wasn't, wasn't too happy with that. And today's track, better for you? I think so. Um, I, I mean, I mean, you know, my machine, I mean, you know, you know, it's just great right now. And, um, you know, and the other two guys, you know, like, that are riding on the team with me, I think, um, you know, I think that they're, I mean, like, I mean, you know, like, it's their first time, but I, but, you know, but I think that they're really excited, you know, uh, you know, uh, to be here, definitely. And the setting is beautiful. Beautiful weather, beautiful track. Yeah, yeah, it finally, finally stopped raining, and yeah, and the track, I mean, you know, it's extremely, extremely uh, tacky, you know, and it's going to, you know, like it's going to have a lot of grooves, you know, and a lot of deep ruts in the corners, and I mean, I think that I ride those pretty well, so. And what have you actually shipped, because it must be difficult to come here and set bikes up for a one-off? Well, we've basically shipped, you know, you know, a complete race bike, and probably three times the parts to build another one, so. I mean, you know, we're definitely, you know, we're definitely, you know, we have, you know, we have wheels and pipes and shocks and suspension and bars. I mean, you, know, you name it. I mean, we have it. So you're well prepared. Oh yeah, I, w I would like to have my semi from the U.S. You know, my big 18 wheeler that we race out of in a shower and a lounge area, you know, and everything else in my locker. But, uh, you know, but you can't always have the, you know, have the luxuries. But you've been the the member of the team that has raced before. You have a bigger point to prove than the rest. Do you think? I don't, I don't know. I'm around the 250. Um, you know, you know, 250 generally uh, tends to be a, you know, the fastest bike here, and uh, I want to be the fastest, fastest in the whole world. Well, we wish you luck this afternoon, and I believe you finished second in the AM, AMA Outdoor Nationals. Yeah. And yeah. That only finished last week. Yeah, yeah, and you know, like a lot of that, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, with the pressure riding, you're riding for the actual, uh, you know, 250 National Championship at home. You know, like, you know. You know that's gone, and um, you know I'm just here. You know I'm just here having fun. I mean, I mean, I'll, I mean I'll, I like the track, and you know, my motorcycle seems to be working great. And you know, and I think I mean like if I can just go have fun, you know, and get out front. I mean then I mean I shouldn't have no problem. So, Jeff and Meek, thanks very much, and we look forward to seeing your race this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. Steve Lamson, welcome to Europe. Your first time you've been this far east in Europe. Yeah, pretty much. This is the first time, and. Uh, so far, it's been pretty good. I mean, I've been over in Paris and all that kind of sort of thing, and uh, this is the first time in Czechoslovakia, though. Or Slovakia, I should say. <laughs> yeah, they keep changing the names yeah. just right now in this Far East part. Yeah. And you've had a great season. American 125, outdoor national champion. It was a good season for you? Yeah, it was. I mean, it started off uh, not so well because I had a lot of injuries, and uh, but towards the end of the season, it was really good. I mean, I won a lot of the nationals. I think six out of the you know, 12 that they had, so it went really well at the end, though. And race, you tra trained yesterday, rather, and um, practiced this morning. Tracking good condition out there? Yeah, right now the track's great, actually. I mean, there's a lot of traction, uh, some rock, but nothing really bad, though. But it's really good, ideal conditions, I think. And the team spirit, you know, you're a newcomer um, with Ryan. You hoping to win that back, is it important? Yeah, it's important. I mean, that's why we came, all of us came over here in mind, you know, to win, the, win it back, definitely. So uh, I think we got a good team. I mean, um, myself on the 125, and... Jeff's riding the 250 really well, and Ryan, you know, Hughes, he's on the 500, and he hasn't had much time on it, but uh, he's right. Seems like he adapted to it pretty well, so I think we'll have a good chance at winning. It's very open, isn't it? You know, in the past, we, you know, we've we've um, we've caught up a little bit of ground, I feel, but now, right now, we've got Belgium, France, Great Britain, Italy. They've all got some great little riders, so this is this is good for motocross. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, it's definitely not not easy, you know. I mean, England beat us last year, and. Uh, I know they're strong this year, and like you say, uh, Belgium and all that. So it's going to be tough. I mean, we just got to go out there and do our job, and it turns out good, hopefully. Well, Steve, we, we welcome you to Europe, and we look forward this afternoon. And it was a big crowd and great weather, so we hope to see some fantastic racing. Yeah, I think we'll definitely see some good racing, and it is a nice day. <laughs> no rain. Thanks very much. Thank you. After last year's memorable win, Britain has a tough act to follow. Last year's win was a surprise, but they do have the riders to do the job again. Malin has shown flashes of brilliance all year and just loves the big occasion. Kurt Nickel has again improved on his World Championship performance and is unbelievably consistent, and this year rides the familiar 250. 
Paul Cooper stepped into the 500 berth this year. Paul's been going from strength to strength and will give it 100%. Motorvision spoke to this year's British team, starting with last year's hero, Mitsui Yamaha's Paul Mallon, who was in the pits with one of his younger fans when we caught up with him. The star of the show last year, you've had a, a up and down season, but can you repeat the performance of last year today? It'll be nice. Uh, I feel pretty good. I felt good yesterday. Um, I tried a different motor yesterday. I initially felt good from bottom and mid, which uh, is what I needed yesterday because of the conditions. But um, I've gone back to my race bike today and uh, it's got more mid-top, so hopefully um, you know, I can hang in there and have like, again two good riders, same as last year. And Kurt was saying that the setting and the track this morning is in absolutely perfect condition. Yeah, we couldn't ask for anything better. Um, you know, it's fast, it's bumpy, it's technical. Um, there's a lot of places to overtake. So uh, like, you know, we should be in for some really good racing. And the team strategy, do we know the starting positions yet? Yeah, we have six and 26, so uh, the inside line into the corner is um, pretty much where we want it to be. But uh, this morning it was a little bit wet and boggy, so they've took the blade to it and we're going to go and have a look in a minute and see how it is. Hopefully it's to our liking and not too soft. Um, but at the moment we're not sure as to where we're going to put the smaller bike. Uh, we spoke briefly about it on Friday when we walked around and uh, we may favour putting the smaller bike up the inside because the bigger bike can gate from, from pretty much anywhere and it's more important to, to uh, have the 125 in as less traffic as possible. So, uh, you know, that's pretty much, I think, what we'll go for. And the guys out there that impress you? If we aren't going to win it, what team will, and who are the quicker guys? Um, I don't know. I mean, obviously, you look at Belgium with two world champions, um, but one of them is in the 125 class, it's Stefan. And, uh, you know, he's been looking OK. Uh, Lamson's looked pretty fast, but I think he's uh, a little bit erratic, so... I don't know, Smets is good on the 500 uh, and Bavotes obviously is going to be good on the 250 but as a whole team I think those, I mean Ryan Hughes is probably the weak link in the 500 um, but I think we'll just have to wait and see, I think if, if uh, we all make pretty good starts it'll be fairly interesting and uh, you know it's too early to say I think, Everyone, everyone's looking real good, it'll be really close. Well good luck and we hope you can repeat last year's performance. Thank you. Thanks Paul. Japan and France a, a bit of a disaster for you because I know you were hoping for better things. Yeah, Japan and France weren't very good. You know, I went to Japan 15 points uh, in front of fourth place and ended up losing it by a few points, so it wasn't very good for me at all. So you're gonna make it up today for us, or? I hope so. I mean, it's not like I've been riding badly. I've been riding very well, especially in France. I was very, very um, quick all weekend. Um, but I just made mistakes at the beginning of the race and I just left myself too much to do. Um, so today if I can avoid making the mistakes at the start, I'm still riding very, very nicely so uh, everything looks pretty good. And the team in general, do you think we are capable of, of pulling, pulling out of the bag again? Yeah, we're just as capable as we were last year, which means that uh, you know, perhaps on paper we're not the strongest team, but if we all pull together and all have a good day, then we're just as likely to do it as we were last year. The bike's been stolen. It's not gone particularly well to the build-up, has it? Uh, no, it hasn't gone particularly well, but uh, then again, it doesn't really count for anything. And so, you know, once the gate drops this afternoon, that's when it all starts counting. And you've had a look at one or two of the other riders. Who impresses you most out of the Americans? Um, I'm not overly impressed with uh, the way the Americans are going. I mean, they're, they're strong again simply because they've got three good riders and therefore they've got good riders in each class. Um, but, but none of them... Um, you know, particularly impressed me at the moment. There's other teams which look stronger to me. And your tip for the win, if it in Great Britain? Um, if it isn't Great Britain, then uh, I think the strongest teams will be Belgium or France. Belgium or France, if it's not you. Well, we wish you luck. We would like to see that one, two, three plate continue on our team for next year's Motocrosses Nations. And thanks very much, Kurt Nickel. Thank you. Paul Cooper, 500 berth, Motocrosses Nations team. Big day for you? Yeah, it's a very big day. Um, I think there's, there's obviously there's quite a lot of pressure because the team won last year and I'm the only member that's changed. Um, but I think, you know, I've got to just take the opportunity and make the best of it because I think it could um, could be a good stepping stone in my career. And yesterday on the 500, you, you looked very good. Your time was good. Yeah, I felt, I felt pretty good. Um, it took a while for me to get going really in the practice and towards the end I put in a good time, I was third fastest. 
and um, everyone was real happy with that and the bike's working well so things are looking quite good. And team spirit, big part in this? Well, I think so. I mean, the team's been together now since Tuesday. We've, um, you know, we've spent the week together just uh, training, doing a bit of riding and general messing around and stuff. And I think uh, the team spirit's very good. And we've spoken to the rest of the team about this beautiful setting and weather that we have this morning. We're in for a good day's racing, aren't we? Yeah, I definitely think so. I mean, the track, the track is really good. It's turned out to be perfect now um, after the rain and obviously now the sun's shining. So um, it's drying out nicely and it's going to be quite rough. And I think the racing's going to be very good. Well, we wish you luck. We won't hold you up anymore as you receive some physio before you go to the first race. And we wish you luck and the team success. Thanks very much. Severa Peck in Slovakia for the 1995 Motocross de Nation. But the teams come from all over the world to compete against each other to decide whom are going to reign for one year as the world motocross team champions. The American here, Steve Lampson, the 125 national champion. Stefan Everts, number 12 for Belgium, the new 250 world champion. Ryan Hughes, runner-up in the 125 series behind Lampson. He rides for America on the 500s. Well, Jackie Martins here, Werner DeWitt and Johan Boonen come to watch their Belgium team in action. Last year's hero, Paul Malin, number three on the 125. Can he do it again for Great Britain for 1995? Well, as the riders come down onto the line, there's number 10, the new reigning open-class champion, Joel Smets, riding for Belgium in the yellow shirts. Gates about to drop. These are 500s and 125s mixed together. And into the lead goes number 13, and that's Dietmar Lacker for Germany. We'll be looking for the first 125, the first 500, and it's Schmetz that leads the 500s. Someone's gone down, Sebastian Tortelli in the middle there. He's riding for France on the 125s. And at the moment, it's Schmetz with the American number four, Hughes, in third spot. He's on the 500. We're looking for the 125s. There goes Paul Cooper riding the 500 for Great Britain. There's Tortelli. The 125s of France, but it's Smets in the lead for the 500s with number 13, Pete Marlacker for Germany, and then the American looking back for the first of the 125s. And well, it looks like it's Carlson, number 21, the Swede. He's got four bladed behind him. And then Sebastian Tortelli, number nine, he's in third place as far as the 125s are concerned, but it's the new reigning world open class champion in the lead. Joel Smets then for Belgium leads the 500s. Hughes has now moved up into second place. And bear in mind, Hughes on a 500, he's a 125 national rider. Going great guns for the Americans at the moment. It's Belgium that leads with Smets, then Hughes, then number 13, that's Dietmar Lacker for Germany. Those are the top three in the 500s at the moment. And Tortelli up now behind Paul Malin. And number six, the American mixed amongst that group. So at the moment, the Belgians leading the 500 category. America second, Germany third. In the 125s, it's still Carlson 21 for Sweden. Paul Malin second for Great Britain. Then it's Tortelli for France going through. Pick up some of the others. It's still in the lead then. Joel Smets, Ryan Hughes for America, second. The first two 500s going through. 16, that's Van Dorn riding for the Netherlands. There's some battles on here. And look at Tortelli. He's passed Paul Malin. He's now going to Carlson. Steve Lampson in front of Malin as well. So it's not a good race for Malin this year. Paul Cooper, number one, just going through for Great Britain on the 500. Mikhail Mascio, number seven, went down the hill just before that. Another rider not familiar with the bigger bikes. Three going through, there's Malin up the hill. 
but it's Joel Smets for Belgium in that distinctive yellow shirt that leads at the moment from the American Hughes. Can the Americans win back the trophy for this year? Then Lacquer beginning to sort themselves out just a little bit. Positions are so important. There's Tortelli. Has number seven, Mascio, the 500 French rider behind him. But France at the moment, not looking too bad at all. Cooper going through number one. But Belgium have been hovering for several years to take this championship title. Could this be Belgium's year? 46, Darrell King, the New Zealander, riding in this race with his teammate Josh Coffins. He's on the 125. Well, they're beginning to sort themselves out. There's Tortelli going through once again with uh, Mascio, his fellow teammate behind him. Stefan Evans, the 250 world champion, riding for Belgium. So we've got a Belgium leading at the moment. And Evans is in a really small position. Then it's America. Then Germany goes to the top three 500s. Then New Zealand. 16, Van Dorn for the Netherlands. There's Tortelli for France. Still being chased by Machio. Two Frenchmen, neck and neck. Everts beginning to make up ground for Belgium. Paul Malin hanging on desperately behind Everts at the moment. The old Smets comes down the hill. If he stays in this position, it will be one point from the 500 category for Belgium. And we'll have to wait and see where Everts finishes in the 125 category. 16, Van Dorn for the Netherlands. 25, the Austrian Ziggy Bauer, Tortelli and Mascio, the two Frenchmen behind him. Lamson has gone through on 125. There is Everts. He's third at the moment in the 125 group for Belgium. So it's looking good for the United States of America, but it's also looking pretty close for Belgium. Top 500's going through once again. It is on that. Husseberg, Joel Smets leading for Belgium. Hughes for America. Then Lacker for Germany. Then Darrell King, number 46, for New Zealand. Then 19 comes into the fray. That's Johansson for Sweden. There's Tortelli. Still guarded for Nasho. There's Lamson going through. And Everts is with him. Stefan Everts for Belgium, right with the American. Everts has gone through to second then in the 125 class. The American Lamson dropped down to third. So it really is beginning to hold up. Joel Smets, totally unaware of the battle that's going on behind him. Hughes unable to catch the Belgium new open class world champion. Smets. Absolutely comfortable at the moment. There's Hughes on the Kawasaki. Lacquer still there, still staying in touch, and so is King. Top four 500s going through. Then 19 Johansson. Here's Tortelli. 16 years of age. Absolute sensation in the 125 World Champions in 1994. There's Evans, the new 250 World Champion. There's Lamson, the American Outdoor National Champion. Paul Cooper, unusually seen on a 500, but Cooper doing a sterling job. There's Paul Malin behind him. The old Smets at the moment heads up the hill to the cheers of the local crowd with the American Ryan Hughes chasing hard. Deep by lack of the German having a great ride here. Darrell King unable to catch those three in front. Neither Johansson riding the 500 for Sweden. Totelli, the first of the 125 men, and still Mascio behind him. Two teammates, I think Mascio must be riding shotgun at the moment. Lamson. Then 
number 18, that's Van Rees on the 125. He's right in for the Netherlands, but it's Belgium at the moment, the head of the pack with the old Smets. Ryan Hughes still second for America. Lacker still shadowing Hughes. Can Germany pinch a place back off the Americans? Johansson going through on the Husqvarna for Sweden. Tortelli, the first of the 125s for France. Then Machio, number seven on a 500. Then Van Dorn and Evans on the 125 for Belgium. Lamson, America, 125, followed by number 18, Van Rees. Joel Smets on target just for the one point. Ryan Hughes at the moment still under pressure from Dietmar Lacker. And King, the New Zealander, beginning to close on those two. Totelli, an absolute storming right here from the young Frenchman. Still shadowed by his teammate, but it looks like Belgium are going to take the first race. The 500 category of the first race at the moment. Deep oh, lacquer number 13. Showing the Americans that the Europeans can stay with them. Tortelli to the delight of the crowd, leading that 125 group. Still shadowed by his teammate Machio. Then it's Stefan Evans on the Kawasaki. The American Lampson should be right behind him. There he is. 18 Van Rees goes through. But the new World Open Class champion here, Joel Smets, showing everybody a clean set of heels. Ryan Hughes, the American, and King has moved up to third. New Zealand goes to third in the 500s. Where has Lacker gone? We've lost Dietmar Lacker. He's been off the bike somewhere. Look at Smith, absolutely on the gas down there. Picks his way into those ruts. Hughes goes through and King is closing on Hughes. Well, this will be a surprise. Johansson still back behind that. There's Lacker. And Tortelli beginning to close on the big 500s. Some great racing going on here. Evans going through. There's Lamson, the American, down third. Hughes it is. Has the New Zealander King behind him. But this is the man that leads at the moment. Joel Smets. Comes through past the finish area yet again, but the battle is certainly on behind him. Daryl King has now got Johansson crawling all over him. So he really is going neck and neck. Somebody a fall on the hill, the yellow flag's out. This, this man, Joel Smets, comfortably out there in the lead for Belgium. Green flag, clean track in front of him. Hughes, still there second. The count of the Kiwi, Daryl King get past the American. This really will be a shot for the Americans. They lost the championship last year. They lost the title to the British. They weren't happy about that. They've sent what they consider to be their strongest squad here this year. There's Lamson then, the outdoor AMA national champion. One, two, five. But he's trailing the Frenchman Tortelli and the Belgian Evans at the moment. And number 18, Van Rees, all over the American. Cooper going through, number one. Then Paul Bailey, the hero of last year's donations. And the Italians not having a good day out here at the moment. Chiodi gone through earlier on. American once again. Look at Darrell King. He's been on that 500 all season, so he's no stranger to the big bike. Whereas Hughes is a national 125 rider, having to adjust to the different capacity and power of the machine. Maybe not the right thing for the Americans to do, but after all, they don't really have any major 500 riders in the States anymore. It's all 125 and 250 over there. But the New Zealander climbing all over the American. The battles are on all around the circuit. Smets coming through. 
He is so comfortable at the moment, not having to push at all. And look at King or King going for a roll off. Desperately grabbing at the side of his goggles to pull some uh, clear roll off through. Giving Hughes just that chance to get away. Tortelli going through. First of the one, two fives. Deep Marlaka dropped back off the pace now. There's Stefan Ebert, second of the one, two fives. He's got the Frenchman in front of him, Machio. Lamson, third of the one, two fives. The American with Van Rees climbing all over him. The Americans must be wondering what's going on here at the moment. They dominate normally so often here at the Dinashion. But not this year. The New Zealander King still harassing the back of the Americans, Kawasaki. Can he get past him before the chequered flag? Tortelli closing on the 500s, past Dietmar Lacker. The battle is on here. Machio with Everts, the Belgian behind the Frenchman. It really is all about team riding at times. Lamson with Van Rees, the Belgian there with him. If Van Rees gets past Lamson, that will be a surprise for everyone. Would not have expected it. But a credit to Van Rees if he can do it. Smith out in front, clearly away. He'll just ride his pace to the chequered flag. Hughes just about managing to hold off Carol King's attack. And Johansson, 19 for Sweden, not that far behind them. Tortelli, way out in front now. Evans having to settle, I think, for second spot in the 125s. He's not going to catch the French youngster. Lamson, Van Rees climbing all over him. This is where the battles are at the moment. Paul Cooper riding the 500 from Great Britain, and he's had a wonderful ride. Come from way down the field to get where he is. Everybody uh, sort of underrated Cooper on the 500, but they've been surprised. He's done a marvellous job so far for Great Britain. Smets going through there for Belgium. Hughes is still there for America. Oh, no one can tell Daryl King to lie down and die. He's going to have to go even quicker because he's got Hansen behind him. Tortelli on the little 125. Next to the 125 through, and there is Evans, and he's closing on Tortelli. But Machio is there behind Tortelli. Action is on rear guard, I think. Lamson going through. Where's Van Rees, and there he is. And Cooper, well, he's picking his way through the pack. Slowly but surely, Paul Cooper. Smets it is, up the big hill. One lap to go, Hughes still hangs on to second spot. Daryl King hangs on to third, and Vinnie Johansson hangs on to fourth for Sweden. Tully, one, two, five. Dietmar Lacker, still up. Machio guarding Tortelli's door against Evans. Lamson goes through. Van Rees beginning to drop off the pace from Lamson now. Whether he's got a problem, Cooper on the 500 Honda and not the bike he was originally going to ride. The machine that Cooper originally was going to ride was stolen. So it is Belgium then with Joel Smets that wins the 500. That's one point. Looking back for Ryan Hughes, he is second. That will be two points. Three points for New Zealand. And four points for Sweden. One point for France on the 1 2 fives. And there is Sebastian Tortelli. A brilliant ride from the youngster. Teammate Mikel Machio finishing sixth. That's seven points for France. Favourites before the race, but putting it into practice is always more difficult. But that was an excellent race for you. Yeah, it was an excellent race, as you said. The start was perfect for me. It's the first time I took hold shot this year, so, and it's uh, directly in the mud across the nation. So, and I knew a good start is very important because the guys who are used to ride 125 and 250, they can ride very fast in the beginning, and then they they slow down maybe a little a little bit. But if I take a bad start and I'm a uh, few, second, uh, few seconds behind, it's difficult to catch up, I think. So I was pretty happy with my good start and um, yeah. But, but the win has suddenly put a very confident feeling amongst the Belgium camp here. 
Yeah, for sure for me and uh, and for Stefan now we I think we know that we we can beat all our uh, yeah all the other guys and I think uh, Steph, uh, Marnik watched the race so he will feel confident as well and I, I think he will be very motivated to beat him as well. Stefan, first, second, this is the sort of start that the Americans have had in the past. Yeah, I think we have a good, a good first heat. Uh, it's looking good. Uh, now we have soon the second heat. Uh, I, I think we can, uh, we can do a good result and I think the victory. And uh, Lamson is certainly the best 125 rider that America has. So it was very pleasing for you to catch and pass him because you was a long way behind. Yeah, he's supposed to be the best uh, in the States, but I think he was a little bit too slow to to race the the, the GP guys. If you see Tortelli, he was he was running up the fastest. Uh, I catch him a little bit, but then I, I, I got after Machio and I couldn't pass him and he broke my rhythm a little bit. But then uh, there was another second need, so I will take revenge in that one. Riding the 250, just limbering up. De Maurier takes a drink of water. Stefan Evans riding the 125 for Belgium. Had a second in the first heat. In the 125 category, that is. There with Monique Pavortz riding the 250s. Paul Malin, the British rider in the 125s. And Malin finishing fifth in the 125 category from race one. Certainly uh, isn't the result that he had from the year before. Down onto the line then for the second heat, these are the 250s and the 125s together. Towards there, number 11, Kurt Nickel, number two. Tortelli, number nine. Tortelli winning the first 125 shootout. Who's it gonna be this time? Up the long drag up the hill, it looks like Martellini. Got a good start. And it's the American Emig then from DeMario, from Byra and Nickel and Bevorts. They'll start to sort themselves out. There's the first one, two, five, Totelli. Great start from the young Frenchman. But it's Emig. And DeMario shoves Byra out the way, number 14. Nickel now with Bevorts. Number 12, Stefan Evans. Evans is leading the 125 group at the moment, Totelli behind him. The bigger capacity bikes outstretching the small 125s up the hill, as happened in the previous heat with the 500s. But here, Jeff Emig as the Frenchman de Maurier. Number eight on the inside of him, then the German Moira, then the Brit Kurt Nickel. Then the Belgian rider, Monique Pavorz, finished second in the World 250 standards this year. They start, start to sort themselves out at the bottom of the hills. It really is a battle now. This second race is the all-important one. Belgium it is at the moment that lead with just the three points. The Americans have got five, the French have got seven. There's Tortelli. Now we've got a right tussle here. The Frenchman De Maurier going after the American, both on 250s. Myra, also amongst that group. There's the ball to his 250s at the moment at the front, which can only be expected. There's Evans. And there's Tortelli. So Evans from Belgium leads the 125 class. And the American refusing to move over for the French Arms in a position here, maybe, to close up the gap in this second leg. 125s and 250s mixed together. Lamson, number six. He had a third in the first heat, scoring three points. His teammate on the 500. 
incredible speed from these one two There's Lampson. America once again being a little demoted as far as the one two five category is concerned. Downhill once again, the American. Still followed by the Belgium 250 rider, Arnie Kurt Nickel there, still behind that group. Tortelli on the 125 closing rapidly on him. Lamson, 125 American rider. Mazemig that had the responsibility in the 125 ranks last year. And the Brit Paul Whirling really gave him a run for his money and beat him in both races. And the Americans fight in the 125 class again hard for 1995. 254 is going through no real changes. So far, as you can see now there, that Stefan Evans beginning to drop back off the young Frenchman Tortelli. One of the youngest riders to win Grand Prix legs. This was the young Frenchman Tortelli for this year. A real sensation in the 125 Grand Prix. Byron leading for Germany. We're looking back down the track. It should be the American number five, and it is. So Emig still chased by Bavortz, but look at Tortelli. Ooh, sideways on for Byra. I'm sure the German would not want to make a mistake now. Nickel trying to stay in touch with the riders in front. Tortelli still there behind his teammate. There's Evans closing on Tortelli. Lamson, six. Can't catch him in front. And when you consider Lampson is the uh, outdoor national 125 champion in America, the German, Moira, had such a gutsy season. The Belgium still there, comfortable in third. Where is Evans? There is Dortelli. And there is Everts. So it's two points in the 125 category for this outing for Belgium. It's all down to Marnie Pavorts now to try and elevate himself for just a little. It's the Belgians that have just the three points before this race. We could end up with a bit of a tiebreaker at the end of this one to go into the last race of the day, which will be the 250 500s. Byra for Germany leads. American Emig second, the Volks third, so that with three points. The, they stay as they are, with five points for Belgium to go with their three. So I suspect that Belgium may well lead into the uh, last race for this the nation at 1995. Here comes Bora. The Germans ecstatic at the moment for this young man. He really has gone out there and shown everybody how fast he can go. Hemming picking his way past the back markers. Bevorts, the Belgium, unable to close with him. Neither can Nickel. De Marie just keeps hanging on. The US squad manager there looks on, looks at his watch to see how long it is to go. Can Hemming get back to the front? Can he get past Byra? The difference is one point. There's Nickel, still Bivort's behind. Well, I don't think it's going to change. Stefan Evert still behind the Frenchman Sebastian Tortelli, and we call him a man. He's still very much a teenager. Lamson on that number six Honda. Mitski Altonen. With number 60, that's Kiyote, who very nearly took the 125 world crown this year, but was beaten by Zandro Puzar. Down the hill comes the German, Myra. Sleeves rolled up for the occasion. Emmy, Bevorts, and the Belgium so much wants to get past him. 
No changes in the 250s. First of the 125s, second of the 125s, as it was before. France, then Belgium with Stefan Evans. Lamson, the American, third. No changes between the 125s or the 250s. As yet, the race is not over. The German bar at 14. Where is the American? The answer is there. There's the Belgian. And there's the Brit. Frenchman going through with the other Frenchman behind him, his teammate. So, De Maurier to Telly together. And there is Evans. And we're looking back behind Stefan Evans to Lampson, the American. It certainly isn't going America's way. We've seen this the nation's crown won and lost at this second heat. This is where it's all important to score those points or not to score the points as the case may be. It's one point for a win and look at the American. Well, showboating isn't going to get him up to the front. He's going to have to get on with the job. Green flag up. It's all clear in front. No fallers. Di Mario goes through. Totelli on the 1-2-5. Still chasing. And Everts must now have resigned himself to the fact that this is going to be two points for Belgium in the 1-2-5 category. And Bavort looks very much like he's going to pick up three points. So it should be five points to Belgium to go with their three. So that will be eight points then going into the last heat of the day. Ryan Hughes, the American 500 rider, is checking out the track. The American team looking on for their rider. Through goes Emmy. We'll be looking back for number six, Lampson on that one, two, five. And the Americans must be feeling that they're not going to win it again. Two years in a row, they're not going to be happy. Tortelli goes through, but the quality of world-class motocross now in Europe and all over the world, certainly anyway up to the par of the speed of the Americans. There is Lampson going through. He's not going to catch the ones in front, that's for sure. They're looking on. This is the all-important race. Vira going through. The German. We're looking back for the American. He gets the pit board. He's second. Then it's Monique Pavortz for Belgium. Still Nickel behind him. Then De Marier and his teammate Tortelli. The first of the 125 boys stays there behind him. Pit boards being readied. Stefan Evans goes through for Belgium. So Belgium's at the moment third and second, respectively, to their each category. Second and fourth for the Americans. Chiodi for Italy. And they're having a bad day, the Italian jet again. There's Carlson for Sweden, number 21. He's having a useful ride here for Sweden. Pity Hansen scoring points, or the lack of points, we should say, in the 500 category for race one. A win then for the Germans. Second then for America in the 250s. Third for Belgium in the 250s. That's three points. Kurt Nickel for Britain, fourth. Then fifth then for France with Di Maria. Five points for France. Six points all together with the one for Totelli. He won the 125 category. Stefan Everts taking two points to go with the three. The Monique Pavort scored. That's five points in total. They've got eight points. Skirt, fourth place. A tough race. You know, any one of the first four or five could have won that. Yeah, it was a tricky race. Um, I, I think the only way Barra would have been beaten is if he'd gone upside down. But, I mean, that was more than likely the way he was riding. So... Um, but from then on, you know, uh, I was—I think I was actually speed for speed around the track, probably quicker than Byra. Uh, sorry, but, um, Emig. 
but uh, you know when I got up behind him he has a funny riding style and it's the opposite from mine where he loses all his corner speed and then goes quick up the straights and he, I, I, once I got behind him I, I couldn't pass him and then I sort of lost my rhythm a bit my knee got between us and from then on I, I was never going to make the ground up but slipping away now really with Paul's failure to finish in that one it's beginning to look as if though it's going to be between Belgium and USA yeah it looks that way it'll be between um, Belgium and USA you know, I mean, we, we, we gave it a shot, you can't win every year. So, uh, you know, it wasn't going to be our day. The spark that was there last year isn't quite there this year. But on saying that, I think everybody would be happy for riding the USA don't win it. I don't mind, really, you know. It's a year. I don't want the USA to win, I don't want Belgium to win either, so... <laughs> <laughs> True, Brett. You want Britain to win or nobody else? Uh, just about, yeah. Kurt Nickel, we look forward to the second heat, but thanks very much. Thank you. Motorvision Club memberships are available now and will provide you with American Supercross and Outdoor National Action as well as Grand Prix races from all three classes. You'll receive eight videos throughout the year as well as Motocross The Book. Club members also receive discounts on all other products either produced or imported by Motorvision. Motorvision, the video magazine. multi-air filters as used by Team HRC and Open World Champion Joel Smets. Multi-air would like to congratulate Joel on his first World Championship. Multi-air filters, quality filters for World Champions. Multi-air. It's a big crowd then, Ryan Hughes here talking to his teammate Jeff Emig, the 250s and 500s going out next, Marnik Bevoort's number 11 for Belgium, says on his shirt they're the Belgium team, they're in with a good chance, they've got 8 points in total, the Americans got 10 points, so just the 2 points difference with the French with 13 points and the British with 16 points going into this last race of the day. As we've said, the 250s and the 500s mixed together. Board goes up. All eyes are going to be on the Americans and the Belgians. And Spence has got stuck on the gate. Carl Spence is stuck on the gate. Well, 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 well. There he is, he's got away. Dead last, the old Spence. The Belgium are not going to be happy about this. There they go over that big double. Some of them jump in it, some of them not. Well, that's dangerous. Well, you can see what happens when you don't jump it. Well, controversy. The FIM steward for Belgium arguing that the gate didn't drop. They've stopped the race. They're bringing them back. Just do it all again. Lucky for Joel Smets there, lucky for Belgium. This could be a very controversial subject in the future, depending on the outcome of this race. Up goes the green flag again. Let's hope this time it's all clean. It is, they all appear to have gone away. The American on the inside there, Ryan Hughes. Smets in amongst that group. Oh, we've got, it. We've got somebody down. And Bevorts is amongst that group. Monique Bevorts, the Belgian rider, he's caught amongst that group. Having major problems getting back on their bikes. You can tell how steep they will. I'll just stand on your Kawasaki, if I may. Thank you very much, says Bevorts. But nevertheless, this could alter the whole outcome. 
of what is going to go on. I think Schmetz is in second place at the moment, but he needs the boards to get up there with him. Definitely Schmetz is in second as we pick them up coming through. There's Nick on number two. There's, there's the American, Jeff Emig. But it's 19, Peter Johansson from Schmetz. From then 13 behind him, and that's Dean Marlacca. There's the American. And the 500 rider going through, Ryan Hughes, not in a good position. But where is Monique Bevorts? He lonely back there, 58, Puzar just gone through, the new 125 world champion. And there is Monique Bevorts, way down at the back. Well, 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 it's just two points, the difference. Smets. With number 13 inside in the German, Dean Marlacca. It's all in this last race between the Belgians and the Americans. There's Hughes, number four. It's the Swede, Johansson, number 19, then, that leads from Smets. Then number 14, that's Vira. Then Paul Cooper, the British rider. He's got the American inside him, number five, Emig. And it's Byron now that's taken the lead. Byron, Johansson, and then Emig. Then it's Schmetz. Then Nickel. Then number four, Hughes, America. Then Cooper going through. Well, it's all down to Bavort as far as Belgium's concerned. If he can get himself back up somewhere near the front. Belgium are on with a chance of taking this title. But it's early days yet. Don't count your chickens as they say. Black and going through. He's dropped back now. Obviously been off the bike. There is Bavortz. Head down. Trying to pick off the riders in front. But it's a tall order. But it's the German number 14. Pit Vera then that leads. It's been a tremendous day for Vira, That's for sure. Once again, Germany becoming a nation of top class motocross riders. Schmetz is still there. Where's the Americans? There's Hughes. And that's De Maurier and Cooper behind Hughes. Now bear in mind at the end of this race they will all drop one result. And if Bavort can't make his way back up, it means they'll drop his result. Now Schmetz has got to finish in front of the Americans. Certainly in front of that man, number four, Ryan Hughes. He's got to beat Hughes as Smets stays in front of Hughes. Belgium will win the trophy this year. But as we've said, it's still a long way yet to go. Look at this, 30,000 odd people turned out to witness some superb motocross racing, the best of the best from all over the world come together here at the Dinashion. Paul Cooper, number one, Britain, obviously winning last year, taking the first three numbers, one, two and three, Cooper taking one, Kurt Nickel rode the 500 last year, riding the 250 for this year, the American, Hemig, on the 250th moment, leading Johansson, Spence and Nickel and Hughes, we can sit there with calculators, we're blue in the face, we really don't know what's going to happen so near the end of the race. Well, look at Johansson, very nearly taking Schmetz off the bike. Nickel uh, definitely took advantage of that and has moved up. I think maybe, no, he's not managed to get past either of them. But all that action is allowing Hughes to close on Schmetz. There's Moira, the German, leading the race, the first of the 250s. In the second, in the shape of the American Emig, first of the 500 to Schmetz. And Hughes is definitely closing on the Belgium. And Cooper having a good ride. The one on that 500 Honda. Totally unaccustomed to the big bike. 46, Daryl King, the New Zealander. Here comes Byra. First in the race, first of the 250s. Second in the race, second of the 250s, the American, Jeff Emig. First of the 500s, Joel Smets. Then it's Nickel, and between Nickel and Smets, behind that group, it's Hughes, there's Johansson, and Cooper. 
17 went through there with it. Petro Tractor, good day for him. Here comes Emmy. Then Spets. Then Nickel. Now where is Hughes? With what Nicol said in the interview, I wonder whether he's going to uh, actually let Hughes go past him. 17 fed throw tractor, riding for the Netherlands. Di Mario there, number eight, riding for France. And Di Mario on the 250. There's Spence, there's Nicol, there's Hughes. This is where the championship battle lies. There's Johansson on the big full stroke. Then Cooper, then Tractor. De Mario for France. The rest of the teams come through, and we've lost Byra. The American Emig has gone into the lead of the race, the lead of the 250s. Schmidt still leads the 500s. Then it's Nickel and Brian Hughes, the American, in second in the 500 category. Well, if you sit down with your pens and paper or calculator or whatever you think of, you can work it out that Hughes has got to pass Smets for the Americans to win the, the nation's trophy by means of the better last race result. Well, Nickel is in there, helping to keep the Belgians out there in front at the moment. Whether or not Nickel will uh, favour the Belgians to win against the Americans or whatever, we'll have to wait and see. So it is Emig that's leading. Smets. First in the 500 class, then Kurt Nickel, I'm sure Nickel would like to pass Smets. Then it's Hughes, the American. Then Johansson for Sweden. It really is starting to uh, close up a little. And Paul Cooper having a tremendous ride for Great Britain. Demaria goes through once again, being chased by one of the slightly slower riders, but out in front, it's the American, Jeff Hemming. Certainly didn't enjoy that last year when he was on a 125, but making up for this year, Smets will no doubt have received his pit signals. And so will have Brian Hughes. He will know the position by now. He knows he's got to get past Smets. There's your hands of the Sweden. They've had a good donations. Cooper going through yet again with De Marier closing in on him. Then 17, once again, Pedro Tracer. Down the hill comes Jeff Hemming. Smets there still behind him. We're all waiting to see if the Sparks just might fly. The Brick Kurt Nickel keeping Hughes at bay at the moment. Pity Johansson. Unaware of what's going on in front of him, of course, but he'll be aware that Paul Cooper is not far behind him, and Cooper knows that De Mario is there, and so is Tractor. So the battles for the lower placings are still raging royale. Smets, Nickel, Hughes, 500 Kawasaki against the 250 HRC Honda. That's Barner of Johansson, the Honda of the British rider Paul Cooper. Then it's the Yamaha of De Mario, the Suzuki of Tractor. And he's looking across at his board. And Emig, I think, is being given orders, maybe to slow Schmetz down a bit, to give Hughes a chance to catch. And you can see, oh, Nickel, and they're all, Nickel got it all sideways over the jump. And Hughes ran into him. Well, effectively, I think you can say that's just about blown it for the Americans. Kurt Nickel got the bike sideways over the jump. That would have been deliberate. The back end kicked out. And Hughes just ran straight into him. So any thoughts for Emig of slowing down here? We see it again. You watch Nick as he lands. The bike lands. You can see him go sideways. The back wheel kicks off the top of the jump. The bike goes sideways. And Hughes is in mid-air and has got nowhere to go. He tries to go right. Nichols' bike swerves to the right. That's it. Well, at that point, I think the Americans just lost the Donations Cup for the second year at running. Down the hill comes Schmetz, still chasing the American 250 rider, Jeff Emig. But Schmetz has got this. 
Here comes Hughes. Ryan Hughes must know that there is no way he's going to do it now. Johansson coming through. There's Nickel. He looks over his shoulder. He's got DeMarie behind him. Then it's Bedro Tractor. Then it's the 500. Then a Paul Cooper. Well, the 30,000 strong crowd here, absolutely delighted with the action. This motocross de Nation always brings in a big crowd. Ryan Hughes, number four. The burden laying on his shoulders to win the cup back for America. But it's all gone wrong for the Americans. Kurt Nichols crash, bringing down Hughes. I don't think Hughes in no way is going to catch Smets now. It looks very much like Belgium have won their first the nation's trophy since about 1980 when they won it in Great Britain at Morley Castle. And I believe the Donations comes back to Great Britain in 1997. There's Hughes, the American. Got the Hansen now behind him. Nickel beginning to get back on the gas after that crash. De Maurier shadowing those three. Cooper, he's had a brilliant ride on the 500. Unused to the power of the big bike. But have a last minute work on the machine for him. Here comes the American then, uh, Jeff Emig, to win. He puts his hands up to his team and says, well, what can I do? Smets comes in. Belgium have won the motocross de Nation for 1995. As we said, the first time since around 1980. Joel Smets it is then. Stefan Evans also for Belgium. What can you say for those and Marnik? They did it for Belgium. Okay, seven, what was you thinking in the last two laps? Oh man, I was so nervous. Uh, Hughes was coming so close and uh, Emic, he started to slow down. and But uh, it was up to Javel and uh, I'm so happy he did it. He Is it harder to watch than to race? Well, I was so nervous, same nervous as I have to race. Especially this race. Fabulous. The perfect end of the year for you? Yeah, it's my second title and... Uh, very good. Congratulations to you and the team. Thanks to all my to the team. Yeah, the the first start it was um, false. Uh, yeah, I missed the start because my gate didn't drop. So then, uh, of course, I was a little bit nervous. But I um, yeah, I took a pretty good start, and uh, my race was going perfect. But uh, the final three four laps, um, the American team was really. Um, like I should call a little bit unfair because um, Emig was, em em was really slowing and in the corners he was really really tried to to break me out so that was not not very fair and I'm happy for us that the American team crashed so and not we well congratulations to Belgium from everybody in Europe <laughs> today was was pretty incredible with so little time on the 500 you must be very proud and satisfied with your performance yeah you know um, yeah, I felt pretty good. You know, I wish I could have won the last moto. I think I would have if I didn't get taken out. But, uh, you know, that's the way things go. You know, I've only ridden that 500 once in the last two weeks and almost beat the world champion. That's, I think that's pretty good. You know, I think uh, a lot of people I heard were saying that I can't ride and Schmetz was just going to smoke me and make me look stupid. Well, I think I kind of made him look a little dumb catching him and not having that much time. You know, they both, you know, he rode good this weekend and the Belgian team rode really good. They deserve, you know, they deserve the win because they won. But, uh, you know, we'll be back next year and uh, I think, you know, we'll be strong again. You know, we're strong every year. So it just comes down to, uh, you know, the luck and uh, which motos, which way the motos go. Are you surprised at some of the speed of the Euros, uh, particularly Tortelli? Have you a chance to watch him today? Yeah, you know, he rode really good, but, you know, I don't, I don't know if he could go that fast every race. You know, yeah, some people have a day in their lives that just click and they just go faster than hell. And I think today was one of his days. You know, he's definitely a good rider, but you know, we'll see how he does next year in the GPs and uh, and uh, next year at the Donations. And you're looking forward to coming back. I mean, have you, in, despite not winning, have you enjoyed your trip to Slovakia? Oh yeah, definitely. You know, this is always experience. You know, when I get 30 and retire or whatever, you know, I want to look back and go, hey, I done, I did this. You know, four or five years or whatever, how many years they want me to come. And, you know, it's always something to look back on, and it's always been one of my dreams to come here. You know, I was 
they asked me to ride the 500. I was a little, you know, skept skeptical about coming, but, you know, I was like, hey, you know, this has always been my dream, and it might be the last time I'd get a chance to come over here. But, you know, I think I pr proved a lot of people wrong, you know, what they said, and I uh, made a lot of people happy, too. For sure. We've enjoyed your performance today on the 500. Um, you really lit up that class, and congratulations. Despite not winning, we feel that you played a big part. Thanks a lot, and thanks, uh, thanks for uh, covering the race. Thank you. Not on the winning team today, but did you enjoy your racing? Yeah, I did. I mean, I was just happy to be over here doing this. I mean, for myself and Ryan Hughes, I mean, it's our first year ever doing anything like this, so it's a big accomplishment for me, and I, I wish we'd have came out here number one, but, you know, number two's not so bad. I uh, think everyone expects us to win every year, but uh, the European guys are getting a little faster on the outdoor stuff, and uh, I mean, we gave 100%, so. But Belgium is a very strong team with two world champions and a vice champion, so... Yeah. Maybe they would have been difficult to beat. Yeah, I figured before coming here, I mean, when I seen a list of uh, who they had on the team, I mean, I knew it was gonna, wasn't going to be easy. It's going to be tough, you know, so. And Tortelli really is the, the surprise package of the European season, finishing third at the 16 years old, and now just turned 17, so we, we knew he had the speed. Yeah, he rode <laughs> really good. I mean, I expected, I heard that he was going to be fast, and I knew Everest would be really fast, so we kind of, the three of us were kind of, away from everyone else pretty much our speed was a lot faster and but uh Vitelli rode really really well I was surprised. Jeff Emick um won, won the class you couldn't do any more first and a second excellent result for you but not quite good enough to win uh, the trophy. Yeah I mean you know we ended up second um I mean we were very very close uh I mean you know I, you know, I still could have done better you know you know one place better but um you know, but I tried my hardest, and I'm sure that the other guys on the team did too. I mean, you know, like it was a whole group effort. You know, like including, you know, the girlfriends and the moms. You know, you know, the sisters, the fathers. You know, like the mechanics. I mean, like everybody. But um, Pitt Byers' performance in the first race, he can do this occasionally, clear up and, and. Yeah, well, he hauled that second race too. Yeah. I mean, I was. I mean, I mean, yeah. I mean, you know, he had a pretty good lead on me, and, and um, you know, but unfortunately, you know, sometimes you know, when you're going that fast. You know, maybe you're riding Fresh. a little bit over your head, you know, and, and, you know, and when I seen him down the back, I, I was like, well, you know, well that's good. <laughs> <laughs> well, th this is Pitt, you know, he can win or he can crash. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, I guess that there's riders like that everywhere. You know, we have a few of those in the, in this stage, and we call them, uh, what do we call them, screwballs? <laughs> loose cannons. <laughs> there we go, maybe it's a loose cannon. Uh, nevertheless, uh, win in a second, winner of the 250 category, congratulations. Yeah, and thank thanks again for coming to Europe because uh, we do enjoy this race. Yeah, well, thank you. I thank mean, you. you know, you know me. I'll be back. Thanks very much. <laughs> Second race, seen you crash on the first corner. What did you think? Well, I was really, really pissed off, you know, because I didn't crash by myself. It was somebody that crashed in front of me, yeah, and uh, I feel really, really mad, you know. And uh, I took my bike and I went um, after those guys and. Uh, I did my own race. I came eighth in, uh, place, I think. But uh, I knew that uh, Joel was winning uh, that race, so uh, so that uh, was the most important thing. That some of, of he or I should uh, do a, uh, beat the Americans. <laughs> at the best of the best two world champions there Jold Smets and Stefan Everts and a vice world champion in the shape of Marnique Bevorts these are the best of the best and they have taken the world's greatest title motocross the Nation winners 1995 it's Belgium Great Britain finished fourth France was third the USA came home second once again for the second year in succession yeah, yeah,